Hello, my name is Gideon Cordova and this is my two cents adjusted for inflation. Inflation means the aggregate amount of prices going up and so one could describe it as too many dollars chasing too few goods. Well, in the marketplace of public opinion, I think there are too many opinions chasing too few good ideas. But hopefully in this series of videos we will contribute to the debate rather than detract from it. This is a series of videos about the public purpose and trying to espouse a progressive vision for the future, one in which the people and the planet are served by our economy rather than the other way around. Now, we're going to look at the public purpose through the lens of political economy, but don't let that scare you. Once you wade through all of the deliberate obfuscation by a group of vested interests, whether they're politicians or business leaders, you'll see that there are many options that are actually on the table and a capacity for the federal government to use much more fiscal space than it currently will concede. We're going to do this through the prism of political economy and also the new framework that's being developed by an understanding of modern money. So that's on a macroeconomic level. In a kind of micro way, we'll be discussing how I think we should democratize the enterprise, which is a term coined by an economist called Richard Wolff in the United States. He thinks that if there is a democratic mandate where one person receives one vote in the community at large, why doesn't that same system exist in our workplace? After all, we spend the majority of our life in the workplace, nine to five, five days a week, and yet the workplace seems to be run by management and their constituency of shareholders, which is a very narrow clique. How come the majority of the people who work in the business, who produce the business's productivity, why don't they receive a vote when it comes to the broad strategic vision of the company? If you ask a series of management and their constituency of shareholders, do you think we should pack up business here, close the factory and move overseas where we can get greater profits? They'll say, well, sure, why not? But if you ask the majority of the people who work in those factories, hey, would you like your job to get destroyed, moved overseas? You might find a very different answer. Equally, when it comes to polluting the river or the air, or the whole series of environmental degradation that we've seen as a result of commercial profit-seeking activity, if we ask the people who were affected by those negative externalities, hey, are you happy with your company destroying the environment in which you live? Again, you'd find a very different answer. So by democratizing the enterprise, we are going to be giving a voice to the people who actually create the productivity for all of those firms, businesses, and organizations that you see in your community. Living here in Australia, you would have noticed that since the global financial crisis, we have had a very slow recovery. In fact, we might as well call it what it is, a slow crash. We've seen ever worsening job insecurity, slow wage growth, which is in no way in line with the productivity gains that we've seen over the past 100 years. We also see a housing affordability crisis, not to mention an increasing social dislocation as a result of differentiating social classes. And that's to do with wealth inequality. Nowadays, healthcare is getting worse, access to education is getting worse, and access to a meaningful, dignified job that a person enjoys is getting worse. As I speak to you now in March 2017, we have 750,000 unemployed people in this country. Not to mention that, we also have more than 1 million people who are underemployed. That is, they're working fewer hours than they would otherwise like to. Well, if we have more than 1.7 million people who aren't utilising their productive capacity, could we really call ourselves an efficient economy? Is this the society that we want to be? Luckily enough, there are a number of economists working around the world to develop a framework which puts society's best interests first before the narrow set of interests of a small group of private profit seekers. Those are the modern monetary theorists, and we'll be discussing their ideas in future videos. For now, that's all for this first episode, but I want to welcome you to join in the conversation. This is certainly a two-way means of engagement. I'm learning and I hope you will learn as well. Let's learn in a spirit of tolerance and inclusion and share your two cents adjusted for inflation. My name's been Gideon Cordova and I'll see you again next time.